Okay, in the previous video, we talked about synaptic consolidation, that what happens in your synapses changes as you learn something new. Now we're going to talk about the slower, larger scale type of rewiring that occurs in your brain when you learn something new, and that's called systems consolidation. Now I've got a picture here of patient HM, remember him? Uh, and patient HM had his hippocampus removed uh, from both of his hemispheres, which you can see in this picture. And we know that patient HM, after his hippocampi were removed, lost the ability to form new explicit memories. So originally, people wondered, well, maybe the memories themselves are stored in the hippocampus, but we now know that's not true. But the question is, what is the hippocampus doing, and when does it do it? Okay, systems consolidation. You're starting to learn something new. We know that the hippocampus plays a really important role in the formation of new memories. In fact, we know it's necessary for the formation of new memories because if you don't have a hippocampus like patient HM, then you don't form new memories, explicit memories. Okay, when you first learn something, there are a lot of connections between that new information in the hippocampus and activity in the different cortical areas where that information is eventually going to be stored. And then over time, what happens is there's still connections between the cortex and the hippocampus, but what's starting is the connections are starting to form between the different cortical areas. And we say that consolidation has occurred when you lose the connections between the hippocampus and the cortex, and you gain all these tight interconnected uh, neurons, um, uh, cortical pathways within the cortex. How system consolidation works depends on which theory you're following. And I'm just gonna tell you about two of them, the standard one and the multiple trace theory. According to the standard model of consolidation, new information, the stuff you're just learning, comes into your hippocampus, and then it is transferred to your different cortical areas. Um, memories we know are multisensory, multimodal. Think of the uh, state-dependent memory. So they need to be connected to each other within the cortex, right? So maybe the smell of um, pumpkin pie, um, jars, memories of holidays with my family, right? That's an example of the interconnectedness between my cortical areas. Now we know that you need your hippocampus originally. Um, the stand originally when you're first starting to um, consolidate new information. According to the standard theory, after consolidation has taken place, then you don't need the hippocampus anymore because it's all in your cortex. You don't need the, the translator, if you will. And this standard model is based on studies of people who lost their memory after brain trauma. So if you're hit in the head or you fall down, um, it is not uncommon for people to experience amnesia. Well, why does that happen? It occurs because um, information didn't get an opportunity to consolidate because of the head trauma. What do I mean by that? Now, I've talked about amnesia as if it were dichotomous, an all or nothing thing, but it isn't. Amnesia is graded. And the picture in the upper right, I hope you can see those little vertical lines. What I want you to see is amnesia is the strongest for events that happened close in time to the point of the trauma. So if something happened just like a minute uh, before you had a car accident, that you're not gonna remember. If something happened 10 minutes before a car accident, you're more likely to remember it. If it was an hour before the car accident or a day before the car accident, you're much more likely to remember it. So that's what I mean by graded um, amnesia. If we are hit in the head, our amnesia is greatest for the things that happened just before our head injury. And the assumption in the standard model of consolidation is 
that reflects the disruption of the hippocampus um, actively sending information off to your cortex. So amnesia is graded because uh, remember new memories are the most fragile and they don't get a chance to become consolidated if head trauma disrupts that process. That's a standard theory. The second theory is called multiple trace theory of consolidation. And it really goes after the assumption in the standard model that the hippocampus is only involved during the initial consolidation. And then once information is consolidated in your cortex, you don't need the hippocampus anymore. So the multiple trace model of consolidation is going to argue that your hippocampus is involved in more than just the initial consolidation. And how do we know this? Well, there was a brain imaging study done in which they had people who were in a uh, brain imaging magnet look at pictures and they uh, measured brain activity as people um, thought about their memories from each of these time periods. And what they found is that the hippocampus was active during memory retrieval for both old and new memories. That's not what the standard model would have predicted, right? The standard model would have predicted that the hippocampus was active during new memories, but not the old ones because they've already been consolidated. To, to complicate things, the hippocampus is not always on. It's not equally active uh, during our recall of old and new memories. Instead, what the hippocampus is doing seems to change over time. Uh, so we've already talked about the semantization of old memories. So for example, I know my name is Maggie, but I don't remember learning that, right? I know Sacramento is the capital of California, but I don't remember that. It's not an episodic memory. It's a semantic memory. It's a fact now. Hippocampal activity reflects that shift from episodic memories to semantic memories. The hippocampus responds during episodic memories, but once an episodic memory becomes old and so old that it's now semantic, the hippocampus doesn't respond anymore. So the exact role of the hippocampus in systems consolidation is still under active debate. But one thing isn't under active debate, and this is something that students need to know, is that consolidation happens when you sleep. Consolidation happens when you sleep. You're not going to remember what you study unless you sleep afterwards. Um, so we talked about the old 100-year-old study that showed that uh, college students have better memory for uh, a list that they memorized if they sleep after they memorize the list. But uh, let me show you one from uh, you know a, a much more recent study where they had students memorize lists of word pairs. And it turned out that if you uh, memorize a list of word pairs and you slept after you memorized the list, you're, you didn't forget much of anything. But if you learned, spent the same amount of time learning the same list and you stayed awake after you learned it, you forgot a lot more, 16 times more, okay? So consolidation happens when you sleep. If you don't sleep, then what you have studied is not going to be consolidated. In fact, some people argue that the whole point of sleep is to allow, to allow for consolidation of long-term memories. We know that when people sleep, the cortical areas that are um, activated, associated with memories, becomes more and more active. And we know that sleep involves both synaptic consolidation and systems consolidation. I talked to you about consolidation. Some of you who want to be therapists may find that really boring, but let me bring this back to you. Some researcher, researchers are arguing that uh, reconsolidation, which is related to consolidation, I'll get there in a second, but that the whole reason therapy works is because of a process related to consolidation called reconsolidation. So, when you retrieve an old memory, you've, it turns out that the, re, the process of retrieving an old memory makes that memory fragile again. Memories are really fragile. 
and it's it's kind of crazy right if you want to keep your memories strong then you shouldn't recall them what are you going to do that's a you're just trapped there but you recall an old memory because you've recalled it or retrieved it it's fragile so when you're done with that memory you have to consolidate it again there's another sort of consolidated consolidation process folks think that that reconsolidation basis is how you change your brain through therapy yes psychotherapy changes wiring in your brain and we think it's through the reconsolidation process how do we know this well let me tell you about just one study with people suffering from PTSD post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD is experienced by a significant proportion of people who've experienced a major trauma in their life basically a trauma so significant that they were worried that they might die and what happens is that many months after the traumatic experience um, their brains are acting as if they're still trapped back in that trauma the brain can't sort of disengage and, and get to the point where it understands oh I'm safe now so you'll get uh, for example sometimes um, um, people who uh, experienced violence um, reacting as if um, they're still being attacked even though they're just in the grocery store parking lot okay PTSD is is um, requires extensive long-term therapy to treat in a meaningful way but how does it actually work well check this out in this study uh, people heard their trauma described to them either while they had um, taken a drug that blocks stress receptors so they, their body could still panic in one sense except that there was nothing their, their body's ability to detect that panic was temporarily shut down or they could hear their trauma described to them um, while they were on a placebo which would have meant it's just as bad as having your trauma described to you when you've taken nothing a week after this happened these same people were asked to imagine their trauma again now if you take somebody with PTSD and ask them to reimagine their trauma you're going to see uh, a lot of sweat galvanic skin responses changes in uh, blood pressure respiration all of that but in the patients who heard their trauma so old memories coming back while they were on a medication that reduced their stress response those folks heard their trauma but they experienced lower blood pressure and lower skin conductance than people who are on placebo so recalling a memory changes it and the situation in which you recall the memory changes your memory potentially in a good way that may be the whole basis of psychotherapy kind of wild right so what can you do with all this consolidation stuff well again this relates right back to how to study in a time efficient way for students right you know you have to do uh, elaborative re rehearsal not maintenance rehearsal but you need to you don't say the words over and over again or read them over and over again you try to make sense of them to draw connections you elaborate you have to take breaks remember that the study where students learned the two lists of rules or two lists of words one right after the other if there was a six minute break they remembered twice as much from the first list than if there were no six minute break you have to take breaks you also have to sleep after you study studying all night is just dumb don't do it come right back and in our last segment we'll talk about the brain bases for memories from your life